have found some lizards in the water. I definitely don't want to play with either of these two, but quite an unusual sight this afternoon to see two massive monitor lizards, water monitor lizards, gathered together in the same spot. And usually when you've got two monitors of a similar size, if they are the same sex, they tend to get quite territorial and often quite vicious with each other. But these seem to these two seem to be relatively at peace with each other. Could it possibly be that we found a male and a female? It's possible. Now one of them is the one that we regularly see at Twin Dams. And the amazing thing is, for the last two years that I've been working here, we have watched his tracks, or her tracks, I don't, I assume it's a him, a him, going all the way from Twin Dams, walking all the way north up Twin Dams to just where the, the Juma Dam is placed, at the Voyatella Dam. And that's, I mean, that's a fair distance. That's about two kilometers. And you see those tracks almost all, every single day. There's a tentative approach happening here. The one on the right, not enthralled at all. gliding off to find another more peaceful spot. I wonder if perhaps that's not the female who's not terribly impressed by the attentions of the male. Although the one on the right def- oh! Here we go, found a nice sun patch. There's a, a thickney, a water thickney. I wanted to use the old name Dickop, but that bird on the right there is a water thickney and responsible for a lot of the calls that you hear at night on the Juma Dam camera. Oh, I thought the interaction between the two monitors was going to be slightly more fraught with drama, but it seems as though it's just really, it's just basking time. That's what Saturday afternoons are for. A monitor lizards, when they do breed, have an interesting tactic. They basically have learnt where nature has provided an incubator for them. Now, the female will go up to a termite mound and she will break into the termite mound and lay her eggs there. And the termites won't feed off her eggs, but they will go and repair the hole that she's made in their termite mound. So she goes and finds an active part and then they basically protect her eggs for her because they close them up in the termite mound itself. I'm just listening to an update from Cheetah Plains. Afternoon, Mike. Welcome back. Sorry, everybody. You can watch the lizard while I chat to one of the other guides. Uh, Mike, what direction was that Ingwe Mobile in? Okay, copy. Thanks very much, Mike. I'll make my way there shortly. A firm got you. Right. Sorry about that, everybody. Just chatting to Mike from Cheetah Plains while we look at a reptile and a bird in one shot. Obviously, those of you who are familiar with our lingo will know that I was talking about a leopard that apparently has disappeared. But the leopard said leopard was quarantine, and I'm going to go and see if I can't find him again. Perhaps we'll get lucky on this particular cat today. Francis, absolutely. You are not the first person to make that connection. Uh, monitor lizards are indeed related to Komodo dragons. They don't obviously have the same kind of 
hunting technique that Komodo dragons have, and they're obviously much, much smaller. They are our largest lizard, though. They are the largest lizard that we get here, and they are related to Komodo dragons relatively closely. They don't, I mean, you wouldn't want to get bitten by one, but it doesn't have the same ramifications that it does if you were bitten by a Komodo dragon with their horrible combination of toxins in their saliva. Monitor lizards are just going to give you a nasty infection and whip you with that very strong tail. Which is why watching um, the collective effort to try and remove the monitor lizard from our house in Hootsprate was relatively entertaining. Oh, it comes in all shapes and sizes this afternoon, and James has found something with six legs.